Okay, I know I've done um, sevens in the past, but um, here's some of one of the boxes of albums that I've just kind of been sorting and organising. Um, so to show you what what's in it, um, first you've got Fierce on Your Breath album, Death, um, with a kind of double sleeve. It's either that way or that way. Um, initial pressings as well of this, because this was bought at the time, came with. Um, Sort of six or seven sheets of um, press release type stuff that's in there as well. Um, all kind of spidery written out by Jim Thurwell at the time. Sandpaper sleeve of the uh, first Durati column album. Legend has it that this one was, you know, these albums were folded and put together by uh, members of Joy Division to earn um, pocket money from Tony Wilson. So um, apparently on the sandpaper there's minute traces of Ian Curtis's DNA. That was, you know, one with a flexi as well, which is the Martin Hannett solo thing. Westworld, Sonic Boom Boy, that's the, um, that's the kind of handmade version that I think they gave away at checkouts or something like that. Handwritten labels, got promo sheet in there as well. Look, there you go. Um, that's probably not worth an awful lot, because it's a 10 inch of um, messages by OMD, but one of my favourite records ever because of that tiny little label there. I just like the way that the label's smaller than it should be. Isn't that spotty of me? First press of uh, Mummy Yacht and Watching Me by the TVPs. So not Mummy. Um, they could have been bigger than the Beatles. Like, there's the proof. Um, Dan hand-painted the covers and on some of them wrote stuff on the back. So... That's fairly obviously Dan's writing. They could have been bigger than the Beatles, television personalities and piggies. Ben Sebastian, Tiger Milk. You can get this on vinyl now, you can get it on Jeepster. However, the ultra rare ones are these ones on Electric Honey. Signed ones have gone for stupid amounts of money. So that's nice. Um, TVPs, first album, Rough Trade, great record, great Great, great record. I don't think kids just love it. Lemon jelly. I've got quite a lot of lemon jelly. There's more in this pile as well, I think. Soft rock. This is the sort of bootleggy seven they put out. It's got um, Chicago on one side and the Black Crows on the other. Comes inside a real pair of Levi's, I think they are. And for the full effect, you have to make sure that it has a condom, a flavoured condom in the pocket. This one's vanilla flavoured. Penetration. Moving targets. Um, this is I put this in, this is in the box because it's one of the um, glow in the dark copies. There you go, it's glow in the dark vinyl. It's one of those albums I cannot walk past without buying another copy. I've got about six of these. I don't know what it is. I have a fascination with um, yeah, this record glows in the dark. Um, I've got too many of them. Blank Generation, Richard Lowe and the Voidoids. Not particularly special apart from the fact that this one has been signed by. Marky Ramone, but when he signed it, he signed two records for me. The next one is up next as well. But this, when Marky Ramone was in the Voidoids, he was still Mark Bell. There he is. So he signed this one, Mark Bell, and he signed End of the Century, Marky Ramone. Queen's Greatest Hits, Volume 3 on vinyl, which is nice. Cheers, Ian. <laughs> Brian May, 1999. And this is so nice of. I did. It's a long story, but I did some stuff for Brian, and he's written this letter, which is inside um, congratulating me on my new job um, and appreciating that I'm a vinyl fan because uh, the job involved kind of records let's say um, so he decided to send me one of these what a nice man um, Ultravox mini LP Australian it collects together the retro EP which is the uh, four track live EP and also interestingly enough the two sides of the seven inch single which came free with the initial copies of Ha 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 so you get Modern Love and Quirks um, and until the re-release of Ha 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 on CD this is one of the only places where you can actually get um, those two tracks also interestingly it's got pictures of the three Ultravox albums that are supposedly available in the States and German copies of these albums turn up all the time Japanese copies, never seen any Aussie ones, weird um, White Label that's um, Upside Down, the Mary Chain. Um, supposed to never exist, but um, I, I think Alan McGee pressed up a number of copies. Quite a lot of copies, actually. 
TV piece, more TV piece. There's loads of them in this pile. That's mummy or not watching me. This is actually the second press, um, which Dan put out on Dreamworld a few years after the original. But I think it actually came out in probably the same or less quantities than the Wham Records original. So consequently, this is probably worth just as much. There's more stuff on Wham compilation album, all for art, art for all, which has got the TVPs on it in a number of different guises. Um, the Gifted Children. Um, um, who else are they on there as uh, something else as well <laughs> um, anyway that's the TVPs this is an interesting one look it's a Nick Drake white label <laughs> if it was actual Pink Moon white label it would be worth loads but it's one of the simply vinyl reissues but they made white labels of them I don't know whether that makes any difference to its value the John the Postman Puerile album that's his first album on Bent Records uh, white label contains a 30 minute version of Louie Louie which is quite possibly one of the longest 30 minutes of your entire life all the records come with three Xerox inserts really difficult to get hold of as is the second album which is called John the uh, Postman's Psychedelic Rock and Roll Five Skinners Stepping Out of Holtz Brewery um, this contains another long song and it's got a version of Gloria on which well it doesn't last 30 minutes it actually lasts a 15 minutes Equally a long, long listen. Um, Chariot, this thing on uh, Carlton Kilowatt Valley and uh, Bigger Dread. Bigger Dread, the reason why this record's sought after is um, Chris Morris. It's like a blue jam thing. The, the Uncertain Smile, original. Yellow vinyl, kind of nice milky yellow with a lyric and photo insert. Should be in there. There you go. Super Furry Animals. Rings around the world. This is nice. I mean, to see bands still kind of putting out double albums with nice sleeves and gatefolds, and also this one has track side C, side three of the album plays inside out. Nice touch. Lemon Jelly. I said there was more stuff in here, didn't I? This is the first album, Lemon Jelly KY. Um, really, really sought after. This one completely so, uh, sealed. Um, all the mixes of the tracks on here are the original um, EP mixes. If you buy the album, they were some of the samples were re-recorded. Um, it's just a beautiful package. That's why people love it. I've got two of these. These are really nice. They're um, Lee Perry acetates. Um, kind of messy. I don't know if you can see this on it. It says um, Kung Fu Upsetter and um, Place of the Dragon. Although I think it's Flames of the Dragon, and it's been written wrong, I'm not entirely sure, let's put this back in its sleeve. Um, they're all in these kind of messy big sleeves but it says JBC on them, Jamaica Broadcasting Compor um, Corporation, so they were obviously I think acetates that Lee Perry made sent off to JBC to maybe play out on air. Um, they're messy and they're pretty scratched up but they sound amazing and I would imagine kind of probably one-off specials, dub plates. Kamikaze 185 featuring uh, The Beatles. This is an old school hardcore 12 inch EP featuring kind of breakbeat versions of uh, Because and Yesterday. They're actually not very good versions, but this thing, as soon as it arrived in the shops, was pulled within about two or three days. So copies of this now are quite sought after. As a copies of that actually sold all day of the century. Um, there was rumours for a while that only about sort of 10 or 15 copies of this existed, which is rubbish, there's more than that. But still, people have paid up to sort of uh, five or 600 quid for it, which is ludicrous. Um, it's the first recorded kind of like hip-hop clash in the UK um, between these three bands. It took place at Acton Town Hall, oh the glamour. Um, that's nice. Um, two on one, Moving Shadow. Um, they did a promotional picture disc for the two-on-one series, this is it. It doesn't have any grooves on it at all, it's just smooth, just a picture disc. Um, it's supposed to come with one sticker. Mine comes with two stickers and a plain label for some odd reason. Um, this commands high prices, which is quite stupid as well, because there's nothing on it at all. 